Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 10. This is the final of the finals, and I'll also be showing the final commission rather than making a separate episode. This is a recap, so if you want to watch the show, go to Prime Video and YouTube. And let's get started. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you would. That would be most helpful to me. So we have three semi-finalists here. On the left is a self-portrait that they did in order to get on the program. On the right is the portrait that they did that won their episode. Yes. This painter is very geographic. You can see the triangles and the uh, spheres. You can see the underlying architecture of this, which I kind of refer to as an origami painter. It's very carefully done and very carefully designed. It, I, I think it's a really impeccable style, and I find it really, really interesting and different from anything that we've seen this season. So that is our contestant number one. Here. Now, this is what our, our more geometric artist did for the semi-final, which would have been the last episode. You can clearly see, again, the geometry. So we have now seen three separate portraits from him. The self-portrait, the one that won his episode, and the one that won the semifinals. Here is our second participant. I really believe that he was recruited to be on the program. I don't know why I feel that way. Probably because of how much attention maybe was paid to him in the interviews and things. I'm not sure. I may be completely wrong. Hashtag Joe is always wrong, so who knows. I should have pulled back on this because the actual image that this is the painting that won his final heat in his episode and it was oh, just kind of luxurious in, in the way in the way that paint was applied. Here's what he did for the semifinals, which is also just a very beautiful job. So he's clearly up to the task. Every single one of these artists is up to the task and they clearly have a signature style, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later because I was sure that signature style was something you could nail down and now I'm not so sure. Here is our third contestant. This is the painting that he did in order to uh, win his episode. Very clean, very sparse, and almost looks as if the figure was carved out with a, uh, I, I think with a flat brush for the most part. I, I love how carefully this is done and edited, that there's not too much information and not too little information. Uh, here is what he did for the semifinals, and this is how he got here. So, yay, we have a very, very strong field, and now we're going to go on to see who our model is for the day. The artists are going to have four hours to paint the model. And just so we can remember, let's take a look at the three participants, their, their work. There is, there is the work. These are the ones that are in competition with each other. And this was from the last episode. These are our three semifinalists. <laughs> Boy, this is going to be tough. They're all really, really good. So let's look at the model. The model for today is Barry Humphreys. He's a comedian. He's an Australian actor, actor and comedian and has a persona of Dame Edna Etheridge where he kind of dresses in a different persona. He presents as a, a woman in that persona and he, he's, he's very, very funny. Uh, he was known for his interview show, which I used to watch, and if he got tired of a guest, he would dump them. I can't remember what happened. I think their chair was pulled back and they disappeared. It seemed hilarious at the time and very irreverent. Now here are our three artists and they have spent four hours in the painting today. And we're gonna see, now see the results. Barry is gonna pick one of these to take home. That won't have anything to do with the final judging. Here is participant number one. And by now I feel like I know the style of this person. This is the person that I felt might have been recruited for the program. Very consistent in style. Nailed the likeness really, really well. There's a really relaxed feeling to the figure. I, I just, any, he covered a lot of real estate in that four hours. Very confident painter and very worthy indeed. So he might be our winner. Any one of these might be our winner. Now let's go on and look at our second participant. Here's the one that was more architectural. 
Um, also a fantastic and beautiful job and consistent in terms of style that you can see a difference in these styles. And like I said, we haven't seen a painter quite like this before. And, and the, the uh, judges do say that they want something different. And, and I think this is. I really enjoy how strongly everybody is using color. Nobody's leaning on titanium light, white to get to their lights. Here is our third contestant. And all throughout the competition, he has presented the figure with a very blank background, which I'm not opposed to at all. I just want you to remember that as we go forward, because that is going to change and it feels like an abrupt change to me, and I'm struggling to understand maybe why. Here's a close-up. Very, very, so much carving, as if he carved with his brush, just like you would carve a sculpture. I, I, I just, you know, I adore this kind of painting. And we pull back, and it has a strong impact. And you need that because the final commission is going to appear on a gallery, not in your home. So it has to have a certain amount of gravitas from a distance. And now uh, Barry is going to pick one to go home. Any one of them would be lovely. Uh, so let's see which one he picks. All right, he picks, he picks this one. That will be beautiful. Now, the second part of the finals is that each one of the artists does a commission. So you're um, judged on the commission that you do, and the four-hour job that you did today. So now we're going to get into the final judging. The first one up is uh, Mark. He did a painting of his stepson. So he's a very architectural painter, you can see on the left. And you can't see as much of the architecture on the right. I love the boxing in of the figure here. I find that kind of fascinating as a composition device. Uh, Certainly scaled it up. I don't know how much time they have for the commissions, but, but it's certainly not four hours. I suspect it's at least a week, maybe two. Really strong light source, which is nicely done. This, this, this fellow could, could uh, carry the day and, and, and carry out the commission with no problem at all. And that will be true of everybody, which is what's going to make the decision about who wins really, really difficult. Here's more of a detailed view of it really nicely done, very carefully observed. Wow. Wow. Boy, you better get that negative space figured out because it, it's a primary player in this painting. Next up is Column's girlfriend. Um, in the past, they've used celebrities for this portion of the program. This time they're using uh, friends and relatives. I, I suspect it was because it was during the time of COVID. So here is the painting on the left which has always, like I said, had a spare background in this program. But you can see on the right that when he has more time, he's really investigating space and um, some abstract forms in this case. Really, really beautifully done, but shows me a range that I wasn't aware of. Um, but I do see a consistency when it comes to sort of his color palette, which tends to be strong, but also soft. There's nothing garish going on here. Um, so uh, I'm very appreciative of this large. Let's look a little bit closer. Boy, there's a lot of detail in that. Oh, I didn't notice till we came in closer that he's done a double image. So he has his girlfriend sitting and then also lying down in repose, almost like in a black and white. Oh, I think they're going to like that. I think they like interpretive stuff. Um, nah, who knows? So those are our three participants. No, those aren't our three. We have one more to go. Let's look once again at the painting that that artist did in order to be in our semifinals here. And then we'll go on to the last artist. And like I said, they painted friends and family as their commission. And in our last participant, he chose his son, Max. So let's look at the painting that he did today in the four hours. Lovely. And then we will look at the painting of his son, Max, which has a lot of movement in it. Uh, you know, that's just an exciting painting. I, I have no idea what the judges are going to do. Each one of these people are, are just excellent, the top of their form. 
So they've already won because they're going to have, they already have successful careers for sure and will continue to have successful careers because people who commission to have their portraits painted, this is the kind of quality of work that they want. Um, they, they certainly want a likeness and they want something that uh, is informative. You know, it's, it's painting for the ages. And this is, uh, this, this is an exciting piece. It's interesting that he chose not, not to have um, his son in movement. But there's a lot of movement in the painting, especially in... I, I love it when an artist, you, you know, it's large enough that they have to use those big muscle movements. You know, you can't do this from your wrist down. You can't do this from the elbow down. You have to, you have to move your whole arm. So let's see who the winner is. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Yes, the winner is Column. Now, Colm is the one who has done all these very quiet backgrounds and very precise and minimal painting. So I'm a huge, huge fan of his, a huge, enormous fan of his, and aspire to be this kind of painter. But now, in just a moment, we're going to look at the final commission. And the final commission is, uh, has been controversial. And in a second, we're going to find out why. And I didn't make a separate video about it because um, because there's no reason to. So here's the final commission that Colum did. And remember, everything so far has been extremely spare and things are about to change. The painting that he did was of Nicola Beneditti. Beneditti. Yeah, she is a Scottish violinist. And she, here's the unveiling. She loves it and rightfully so. It's it's an absolutely beautiful painting. It just doesn't look like one of his paintings to me. I well, I just thought, well, where did this come from? This is not the artist that we've seen throughout the the program as we've been watching. And I think my my um, you know, if I have an issue with it, it's a style issue. I just don't like the use of all of that green. Now close up there, I love all that because that's, that's, um, that's the kind of painter he is. He's seeing things in blocks of color. I love that. But why the choice of all that, that greenish light? I, I don't have an explanation for it, and I find it just not an image that, I, that, uh, that makes me um, feel particularly warm or, or wanting to see more. So I know that he took a great risk here, and he did a great job, and... That's what artists need to do. You need to do it to grow and change. So that's the end of season eight. We go on to season nine. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.